If you have a bed that's warped or really hard to level, it can be really frustrating. Well, we've got our Easy ABL Pro Kit that will take all the pain out of leveling your 3D printer bed, and I'm gonna show you guys how to install it right now. Before we get started, I just want to say a little piece about the Easy ABL. The Easy ABL is my favorite product that we offer, and it's also the first one we came out with. The Easy ABL is an auto bed leveling system that I originally put together for my own machines. I use our Easy ABL on every single machine in my office here and in our print farm. I can't imagine running this many machines here with manually leveling beds or with other probes like the BL Touch that are prone to mechanical failures. The Easy ABL has zero moving parts, and that's intentional. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people have issues where the BL Touch pin deploys and wrecks their print, or they have a print failure and their probe gets severely damaged. The sensors we use are very high quality industrial grade sensors. They not only are durable, but they're also very fast and accurate. The cable that connects our Easy ABL to its control board is fully shielded. And as far as I know, we're the only manufacturer on the market that offers a fully shielded cable. The shielding is important because your printer has a ton of stuff that makes electrical interference from your heaters to your fan control and your stepper motors. By adding shielding to the cable, this cuts down on how those things affect the sensor's accuracy. And to go one step further, we also filter all the power coming into our sensor on our control board. Because our sensor is powered directly from your printer's power supply and not from your control board, even if you accidentally wire things wrong, you're probably only going to damage the Easy ABL and not your printer's control board. I can't tell you how many people I've seen fry their control boards when installing a BL Touch because their 5 volt and ground wires are flipped and they don't notice. With the Easy ABL, you don't have to worry about any of that because we're pulling power from your printer power supply and that side is fully isolated from your ZN Stop side. This video is going to go over how to install our Easy ABL Pro Kit on your 3D printer. This video is going to cover the mounting, the wiring, and firmware setup. This video is going to be a longer one because I want to make sure that we went into great detail on each step so you guys understand what's going on and why we're doing things a certain way and to make the installation a lot quicker and easier for you. We also have a step-by-step -step guide on our website at easyablguide.th3dstudio.com and this video is broken up into sections and I'm going to put links to each section in the video description so you can jump around. If there's something that's not covered by this installation video or the installation guide on our help center, you can always reach our support team by going to contactus.th3dstudio.com. When you order the Easy ABL kit, this is what you get. You will get the control box with its power wire, the sensor itself, the calibration screwdriver, and zip ties to attach the wire for the sensor to your existing printer wiring. For this installation video, we're also going to be installing our optional solid bed mount kit. The bed mount kit includes a string relief and four round pieces. These will replace your springs. Now this string relief provides wire string relief for your heated bed. This fits most Creality printers and Solval printers. There is a full list on the product page for this product that has a list of all the printers we verified support with them. Some printers either have string relief already integrated or this will not fit on them. So we have included an extra round mount to replace all four springs with the standard rounds. The included zip ties are for securing the wires to the bed mount itself. There's also another version of this kit that also includes a camera arm to allow you to mount a camera off the corner of your bed. We're not going to be using this here on this machine, but that is an optional add-on that I would like to mention. So we have our Easy ABL sensor here. We're going to go ahead and take the bottom nut off the sensor. And you're going to want to thread the top one up a little over halfway. Now I'm installing this on a CR10 V2 and this is the OEM bracket that we designed for the CR10 V2. Most of your brackets will need additional screws. If you have a screw assortment, they can be really handy. Most of the mounts use an M3 by eight millimeter screw. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and put the screws into the mount and then screw them into the two bolts here. Now, every printer has a different way of mounting the sensor to the actual printer. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the sensor mount to the printer's carriage.
And you want to make sure that the screws are fully seated and the bracket should be pretty sturdy once it's on there. Now we're going to go ahead and take the sensor and set it into the mount. And as you can see here, the sensor is hanging down quite a bit. So we want to go ahead and move this top nut here down a little bit because eventually we want to have the sensor two millimeters higher than our nozzle. There is a calibration screw on the side of the sensor, so make sure that you have the adjustment screw in a position where you can easily get to it once we do the calibration. So go ahead and put the bottom nut on and just snug it up. We are going to come back and readjust this. We're just getting a rough installation done so we can route the cable. So when we attach the sensor wire to our existing printer wiring, we do not want to go straight up because you can actually damage the sensor wire because it'll be moving like this the entire time. We want to go ahead and leave a little droop of wire with some slack down here, and this is how we're going to secure the cable. So take one of the included zip ties and secure the wire to your existing wiring harness. And then we're going to follow the cable all the way back using the existing hot end wiring and PTFE tube as a guide. So go ahead and unwrap the wire. And we're going to go ahead and add about two or three zip ties to have the wire follow the existing cable. Make sure to not over tighten the zip ties. You just want them snug so they don't move. And then we're going to go all the way down and follow the rest of the cable that's on the printer till we get back to the control box. Now that we're close to the control box, we're good. We're going to go ahead and clip these and then we'll show you the next step. So the next thing we got to do is provide power to our EZABL. Now on this printer, it has a separate control box. So we're going to need to open up the control box and we're going to remove these screws here to get to the power supply. So now we have the panel removed and we have access to the printer power supply. Now when we connect the sensor, you'll notice here on our power supply, we've got our AC connections, which are notated by the L, N, and ground symbol. We do not want to touch these. These will fry your kit. We're going to want to connect to the V minus and V plus terminals on the power supply. This is our positive line, which is the red wire, and this is our negative line, which is the black wire. So we're going to go ahead and unwind our cable here. And inside this cable are two wires. There's a red wire and a black wire. So we're going to need to strip this and then strip the wires inside the cable. You can do this with your standard cutters that come with the printer. Just nip at the insulation a little bit. And you can usually get into the wires. You can also put it here and gently squeeze just a tiny bit and pull. And I'm going to intentionally pull a little harder just to show you what will happen if you do. So if you squeeze too hard, you see how we expose the wires? We don't want that. So if that happens to you, snip the end off and try it again. Just do it a little bit light. And it'll eventually pull the white outer sheathing off without damaging the wires. So you see here, I've got access to the wires. I'm going to pull them out. And there's a little strain relief in here. You can go ahead and get rid of that. And clip back the main insulation. And now we're left with our red and our black wire. So go ahead and strip about 10 millimeters off the end here. And this is solid core wire, so it is pretty easy to work with. And again, light pressure. You don't want to cut through the cable. And these will go ahead and insert into the terminals here. Now, if you bought the optional AC adapter, you can power the kit with this AC adapter and you don't have to do this step. There's also a USB power adapter that provides the same thing, but for the demonstration, we're going to be directly wiring this to our power supply. So you want to feed the sensor wire in. If you have a separate control box, 
You can feed in through one of the existing grommets on the back of the case here. If you have a printer like the Ender 3, you can just follow the rest of the wires in. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this in through one of the grommets here. And this is gonna come inside. I'm gonna reach down in here and grab the wires. So I have my wires here. We're going to want to attach the red wire to the V plus and the black wire to the V minus. Now, if you have terminals on every single one of these, you can go ahead and double up if you want to. I don't need to on this machine, so go ahead and just loosen this up a little bit. Make sure the wire is underneath the little terminal and then go ahead and tighten it down. Give it a little tug to make sure it doesn't come out and repeat for the V minus. Go ahead and just pull back the excess wire and that's it. We now have power and we can go ahead and close this up. So now we have our power wire coming out of the control box and we do give you about a meter of wire to work with, which may be too much. You can cut this shorter if you like. And since I know this printer is going to sit about this far from here, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this a little shorter. And then we're gonna go ahead and strip this wire again because we need power for the other side of the Easy ABL. And again, go ahead and clip back the little strain fibers that are in here. And we're gonna go ahead and strip the ends of these. Now, I like to have them really tight up against the control box, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these a little shorter. And we only need a little bit stripped off to go into the terminals for the Easy ABL kit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these flush. And that's all you need for the Easy ABL power. So take your control box and pop the lid off. So we have two different power methods for the Easy ABL. We have the two pin screw terminal and we have the DC jack. If you're using the DC power adapter, you can go ahead and just plug that in and that's how your kit gets power. But in our case, we're going to be pulling the printer power. So we have positive and negative here. The positive is towards the top and the negative is on the bottom. And you can see the plus and minus labels on the actual PCB next to the terminal. So go ahead and take the included screwdriver and we're just going to back these off about five turns and then go ahead and take the wires. I like to just spread them out just a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and insert them into the terminal here with the red wire facing up. You can determine the orientation of the board by looking at our logo. If it's right side up, then this is the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two wires into the terminal. And then tighten the two screws back down that we loosened up. And then go ahead and give them a tug and make sure they don't come out. Now I do recommend you guys use this included screwdriver because it's really hard to over tighten these with this screwdriver because it's so small. If you use a larger one, just be sure not to over tighten it because you can damage these smaller terminals. So now we have our power connected. I can go ahead and plug our sensor into the other side of the control box right here. And you'll hear a little click as it locks in. The last thing we need to do is connect our Z end stop to either the three pin plug here or the two pin screw terminal. Now, if you have bare wires going to an end stop, you will snip those wires off the end stop, strip them and put them into the terminal. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes where because we have this handy little switch here that flips around the wiring direction so you can get a proper end stop reading. So the last thing we need to do in terms of connections is disconnect our Z end stop cable on this printer, we have a plug, so it's as simple as unplugging this and then plugging it into the three pin header on the Easy ABL control board. Just like that. Now, if your end stop has bare wires going to it, you'll just snip them off, strip them, and then put them into the two pin screw terminal here. So now that we have the ZN stop disconnected and the ZN stop wire going to the Easy ABL control board, we want to go ahead and remove our ZN stop switch. 
Now, if your Zanstop switch is mounted with T-nuts, you can actually use these bolts and T-nuts to attach the EZABL control board to your printer. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that the sensor is mounted correctly. We're going to do this by bringing the Z-axis down and putting the nozzle on the bed. And now the nozzle's on the bed, and you can see here I have the wrench that's included with the printers underneath the sensor. So we're going to go ahead and loosen these nuts up so the tip of the sensor is resting on top of this wrench, and then we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. We want the sensor mounted two millimeters higher than the nozzle. So I'm going to press on the top of the sensor and put the top nut down until it touches the mount and then bring the bottom nut up and we want to go ahead and tighten it up. Now I'm going to move this up to tighten it so I can get my fingers underneath there. Do not use a wrench to tighten these down. These are just plastic. So go ahead and just snug them up with your hands and make sure the sensor is secure in there. So now if we bring this back down, our sensor should be resting on the wrench and the nozzle is on the bed. So the next thing we're going to do is calibrate the sensor. We're going to make sure the sensor is in the center of the bed. And we're going to go ahead and move it back down so the nozzle is touching the bed. So we're going to go ahead and turn our printer on. And we're going to go ahead and go to motion, move axis, and we're going to move Z, move one millimeter, and move up two total. Then we're gonna come back out and we're going to go ahead and set the bed to our print temperature. In this case, it would be 60 C. And we're gonna go ahead and let this get up to temperature. And then we're gonna show you guys how to calibrate it. So now our bed is at temperature, we can go ahead and calibrate the sensor. So now our sensor light is already red. If yours is not already red, you do not need to turn this counterclockwise, but since ours is, and most of them will be, we need to go ahead and turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise until the red LED shuts off. So now the red LED shut off, we want to slowly turn it back clockwise until the red LED turns on. So now the sensor light stays on when we move our hand away and the sensor is now calibrated. So the next thing you want to do is go to our help center, which is support.th3dstudio.com, click downloads, and you're going to want to download our Unify 2 firmware for the printer that you're installing this kit on. In this video, we're using a Creality CR10 V2 with its stock control board. So I'm going to go ahead and click Creality and CR10 V2. Now on the firmware page here, we have directions on how to actually use the firmware. And we're going to do a quick overview on how to set up the EZABL sensor in the firmware. If you want a more deep dive on setting up Visual Studio Code, which is what we use to compile it, you can visit vscode.th3dstudio.com. I already have VS Code installed and set up on this computer, so all I need to do is download the Unified 2 for my printer, and then we're going to go ahead and extract the zip file that downloaded to a location on my computer. So I've extracted the firmware from the zip file I downloaded and I've copied the path to my clipboard. I'm going to go ahead in Visual Studio Code and click open folder, paste that path in. And you wanna see here the firmware folder, double click that and then hit select folder. Once the firmware is loaded in Visual Studio Code, go ahead and click the Marlin folder and then double click configuration.h. You're going to look in the file for your printer. And in this case, here's my CR10V2 and we're going to uncomment the CR10V2 line. And if we scroll down here, you'll have a section called Easy ABL Probe Mounts. These are all pre-set up mounts that we've measured and configured in the firmware so you don't have to sit there and measure the distance from the nozzle to the sensor. I'm using our CR10V2 OEM mount, so I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this. 
Now remember, this video is a universal installation video that applies to any printer because the steps are the same. The only difference between this printer and whatever printer you're installing it on are the lines that you will be on commenting in the firmware that you downloaded for your machine. If for some reason you have a custom setup where it's a mount that we did not provide, like a custom cooling duct or something you designed yourself, we do have this option here called the custom probe where you can uncomment this instead and then scroll down to the bottom of the file and you'll see right here, you can enter in your custom probe settings in the custom probe settings here, you can enter the distance on X and Y that the probe is from the nozzle. And there are notes here to help you determine if the offset is positive or negative, whether it's in front of, to the left, or right, or behind the nozzle. But in this case, we're using a pre-configured mount. So all I have to do is uncomment my printer name and the EZABL mount. And we can go ahead and click the little checkbox to make sure that it actually compiles. Now your computer is going to go ahead and download some files from GitHub to compile the firmware and then it will provide an output letting you know if it's successfully compiled or not. Once it's past the successful compile stage, you can go ahead and upload the firmware to your printer and depending on if you have an 8-bit printer or a 32-bit printer, the steps to get the firmware onto the board will vary. The 8-bit control boards use USB to upload the firmware to the printer and the 32-bit ones will generate a file that you will place on an SD card and then pop the SD card into the printer and turn it on to update the firmware. These directions are on the firmware page where we got the actual firmware from. So if we go back here to the firmware download page, you can see we have step-by-step -step directions on how to actually use the firmware and how to upload it. On the 8-bit printers, you might have to manually specify a COM port to upload to it. So I have my printer connected to my computer because this is an 8-bit board. So all I have to do now is hit the little upload button in the corner and it's going to recompile and then upload it to the printer. So we're going to go ahead and let this update and we're almost done with the installation. So now that the firmware is updated on the printer, I'm going to want to test to make sure that the end stop is being read correctly. The easiest way to do this is download a program called Pronterface. And if you search Pronterface in our help center, you can see under the downloads here, we have a link to download Pronterface. So go ahead and download that. We're going to go ahead and extract that to a folder on our computer and then go ahead and load the Pronterface.exe file. So we want to go ahead and select our COM port for the printer and the baud rate. Most printers use the one 15k baud rate some printers use the 250k most creality printers unless you've changed the baud rate in the firmware will use the 115k so i'm going to go ahead and hit connect and you'll see the printer will come online and we're going to want to reset the EEPROM before we go any further you can do this by sending m502 and hitting enter and you'll see hard-coded default settings loaded and then we're going to want to send an M500 to store those settings. So now the EEPROM is fresh and clean and we don't have to worry about any old settings causing issues. So now we can go ahead and test the end stop. So if I send M119, you will see it's giving me an end stop report and we can see the Z is showing triggered because the LED on my sensor is lighting up red. So if I go ahead and move my Z up 10, that's going to make the sensor not be triggered. And if I hit send again, you'll see it's now reporting open. If for some reason you're not getting triggered when the sensor light is red and open when the sensor red light is off, then you need to flip that little switch on the EZABL control board. But in this case, my printer is reporting the state correctly. And I can go ahead and at this point do a G28, which will tell the printer to home X, Y, and Z, and you'll see it's going to home X and Y, and then it's going to use the sensor to home Z. Now I can also send a G29 to the printer, and this will go ahead and have it generate the auto bed leveling mesh. So it'll go ahead and by default take a three by three grid giving us nine points total. And this is fine for 99% of your printers. If you have a bed that's bigger than 350 by 350, you can change in the firmware the easy ABL point setting from a three to a five and get a five by five grid. But for most machines, even on the bigger beds, a three by three is perfectly fine. 
So we can see there, it successfully completed its probing, and we can also do this from the printer LCD. If we press the LCD button, go to Motion, and then Auto Home, it will go ahead and do a G28, and you can see the printer off to the side there homing. That does the same thing as sending a G28 from Pronterface. If we want to do a G29, we can go to Motion and scroll down and hit Level Bed. And this will do a G28 and then a G29 automatically. You can see the printer is executing that right now. And that's all there is to it. Our probe is working correctly. It's talking to our printer's control board and the firmware now. If you did get the solid bed mounts when you ordered your Easy ABL, we're going to show you how to install those on your printer in the next step. If you didn't get the solid bed mounts, you can skip the next step and go right to the Z offset step after you level your bed manually. While the Easy ABL will compensate for any tilt or warping in your bed or unevenness or unlevelness, it's best practice to start with a relatively level bed and that means as level as you can get it with your springs. The main reason to start with a level bed when you're using an ABL system is to reduce the amount of work your Z-axis has to move to compensate for the bed being out of whack during a print. So if you did get the optional solid bed mount kit, we're going to install this on the machine before we go ahead and set the Z offset. So if you don't have the solid bed mount kit, you don't need to do this step. But if you do have the solid bed mount kit, we're going to go ahead and put this on. And I'm going to show you how to replace it really quick. All you do is shut your printer's power off. We're going to go ahead and pull the bed forward. And you're going to take the wheels off. If you press down on the bed a little bit, they spin right off. So do that to all four corners. And the last one in the corner here. Okay, so with all the stock wheels taken off, we can lift the bed up. If you have a factory strain relief like this one does, there's usually a zip tie holding it. Let's go ahead and snip that and remove it. Lift the bed up and take the springs off. There'll be one in each corner. And then go ahead and remove the factory strain relief if it has one. This one has like a little clip holding the top down, so you gotta release this clip for it to let go of the wire and then it comes off like that. And like I said, if your printer can use the strain relief, go ahead and use it just like this one here. This will line up on here and then the wires will clip in. If your printer doesn't fit the strain relief that we include, you'll want to use a standard round in the corner. And some printer beds have a strain relief already built into them. In that case, you would also use the standard round as well. But in this printer's case, this is a CR10V2. This does fit on this machine and it will line up with the wires. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on and then we're gonna put a round on each of these other ones. If you have the cam arm kit, we usually recommend you put it towards the front left or front right. So either this side or this side. On this printer though, you got to make sure that you have it angled so that when the bed moves all the way forward and back, the arm doesn't collide with these upright pieces. You could also just take these off of this printer. These don't really add that much stability, but whatever machine you have, make sure that the cam arm is going to clear it. We do have the dimensions of the cam arm listed if you're using the cam arm kit. So I'm going to go ahead and put one on the back here. Make sure the screw goes through the carriage in the back. Put the rounds on the front two bolts here as well. And then make sure the screws go through the carriage on the front. It does take a sec to get them lined up, but now the bed's sitting flat. And all we have left to do is put the stock wheels on. One thing I will say is if you have Loctite, throw a little drop of Loctite in the little brass nut here on these wheels to prevent it from rolling off. Or if you want, you can even just take a nut and replace this big wheel with a nut. Like these are M4 bolts. You can use an M4 nut and just not have to deal with these big wheels. But we want to go ahead and just tighten these down. Don't tighten them too tight, but just tighten them down so they don't move. 
and we're going to put these back on all four corners. Now when we come to the back here, since we are using the strain relief, we want to go ahead and make sure this is all lined up before we tighten this back corner down. I'm going to go ahead and take two of the zip ties that came with the solid bed mount kit. The ones that come with the Easy ABL are the same, so you can use either one. And we're going to go ahead and pull this through the mount, then tighten it over the wire. Once you have the pieces in place, go ahead and cut them so the zip ties don't get in the way. And then put the final nut wheel thing on the bottom here. So now we have the solid bed mounts installed. If you guys do have them, make sure you put them on before you set the offset. But I just want to show you guys with the solid bed mounts installed, you can see how stiff these printer beds get versus with the springs. These will offer a lot more stability for your printer bed so the bed isn't wobbling around because it's sitting on springs. These are a really good upgrade for an ABL enabled printer. These solid bed mounts work with our easy ABL and even the BL touches. Now there are two different ways you can do the Z offset. The first way is going to get you pretty close to where you need to be. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to home the machine and then bring the nozzle down until it touches the bed. And then after that, we're going to run a print and we're going to further dial it in on the skirt with the live Z adjustment. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. To home the printer, you're going to press the button here, go to motion, and then auto home. This will go ahead and home the printer. So the printer is going to home X, Y, and Z right now. And the nozzle will be five millimeters off the bed. So we're gonna need to come back to the control box and move this down five millimeters. To move it down five millimeters, press the button, go to motion, move axis, move Z, go to move one millimeter, and then you'll see it shows five. So we wanna make this go to zero. And now the nozzles move down. So go ahead and exit this menu. Go back to move axis, motion, main, and then we're gonna go to configuration and go to Z offset slash baby step. And we're gonna need to grab a piece of paper because this is where we're gonna set our Z offset now. To show you guys how this works, when I turn the knob counterclockwise, it's going to bring the nozzle closer to the bed. And when I turn it clockwise, it's going to bring the nozzle further up from the bed. So clockwise brings the nozzle up, counterclockwise brings the nozzle down. I'm going to show you guys how to adjust this right now. So as you can see here, the nozzle is sitting off the bed by about two millimeters. And I'm going to turn the knob counterclockwise. And you can see here, it's slowly moving down closer to the bed. And now that we're really close, I'm gonna take a business card and put that underneath the nozzle. So now I have a business card here. I'm gonna put this under the nozzle and we're gonna move it back and forth and bring the nozzle down, turning the knob counterclockwise until it starts grabbing. So you can see we got some tension here. I'm gonna go a little bit further and now it's grabbing the paper. And if we look there, the nozzle is on the bed and you can see we've moved our nozzle down negative 1.15 millimeters. Now this is not going to be your exact offset. I'm gonna show you guys how to get that with a test print, but we wanna go ahead and press this to exit the menu, scroll down and go to store settings. And if you have a beeper on your printer, you'll hear a confirmation beep and we can go ahead and exit the menu. So now with your slicer loaded, you need to update your starting G code to have the new easy ABL starting code. You can get the starting code that we recommend by going to our help center at support.th3dstudio.com. So if you type easy ABL starting G code, you'll get a couple of articles. We have the easy ABL bed leveling starting code. And we also have an article here that covers where the starting code is located in different slicers, including Cura, Simplify 3D and slick 3r slash prusa slicer the actual code itself is located here on this article and we want to just go ahead and copy all of this code 
and we're going to paste it into our slicer starting code. So I have a CR10 V2 profile here already. I'm going to go into scripts under Simplify 3D. I'm going to select all with a control A, get rid of all the code that was there and paste in the one I copied from our website. That's all we need to do. And now this is the new starting code. Now, one thing I will recommend is that you change your first layer height to 150% for a 0.2 first layer. If you're doing a 0.3 first layer, you can leave it at 100. And I also like to run my first layer width at 150%. I also would recommend you set your first layer speed to 25 to 30%. And for dialing in the perfect Z offset, we're going to want to do a skirt with an offset from the part we're printing and give yourself plenty of outlines to get a chance to dial it in. So I'm gonna set this to 10 and I'm gonna go ahead and pull in just a test file. And for our test file, we're gonna use the tried and true Benchy. I'm going to go ahead and slice this up and then we're gonna save this onto an SD card and put it in the printer. As you can see here, this code has generated a nice little perimeter around the part and we're going to adjust the Z offset on the little skirt here that runs around the part to get our perfect Z offset. So go ahead and save this file with the skirt. You don't have to print a bench, it could be whatever you want. The important part is we're slicing up something and setting that skirt around the part. Kira and Slick3R slash Prusa Slicer also have a skirt option as well. You just wanna make sure it's away from the part and we're gonna show you guys how that looks when we're adjusting it for our first print. So I'm going to go ahead and preheat my printer and get some filament loaded in. And I'm gonna take the SD card with my slice test file and put it into the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and start the print. So our printer is almost preheated now. Once the printer starts a print, it's going to go through and execute the new starting code. It will home X, Y, and Z, and then it's going to take the probe readings and generate the mesh. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to adjust the first layer and it's very simple all we're going to do once it starts printing the skirts around the part is press the knob twice and then to bring it closer we'll turn it counterclockwise and to move the nozzle further away we'll turn it clockwise if you have any little boogers on the bed go ahead and get them off before the print starts you can see there i have one from the nozzle i'm just gonna wait till the probe gets out of the way and just flick it off the bed so the printer will do a purge line in the left hand corner with our starting code and then it will start the print. So as you can see, we're pretty close, but we could go a little closer. So I'm going to press the button twice right now on the LCD screen. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise to bring it a little closer to the bed. and just take your time and adjust your first layer. So I've got this dialed in pretty well here. We can see that we went from a little bit higher height to a more smush on there. You can see we're getting a nice flat squish on the nozzle extrusion. Whereas towards the outer edge where we started, we were a little high. So this is how we dial in our Z offset. We do it on a live print here. As you can see here, our Z offset is actually negative 1.4. So now that we have the dialed in the offset go ahead and press the button go back into the menu go to configuration and click store settings you'll hear the confirmation beep and if we exit the menu you'll see it says settings stored so now our z offset is stored in the printer's eprom if you clear your EEPROM, your Z offset will get cleared out, so make sure you write that down before you do any firmware updates. So as you can see here, we've got a nice first layer going down. It's got a nice flat top. There's no rounded appearance to it, and we're ready to use our Easy ABL. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish. So now that the print's finished, I wanted to point out right here. So you can see here, our initial Z offset was not bad. You can see the gap between the two skirt lines and I started adjusting it to be closer to the bed, which is a more negative direction. 
And you can see once I got it to the correct adjustment here, we have nice smooth lines that are all uniform. And this is what you want to see right here is this nice smooth first layer where it's flat and the lines are connecting with no gap in between. So here's the first layer of our Benchy. You can see it's all uniform. There's no gaps in the extrusion on the first layer and it looks good. This is not a bad Benchy for an otherwise stock CR10 V2. This is probably the longest installation video I've done, but I wanted to make sure we covered everything in great detail, and I hope we've accomplished that. If you have an easy ABL, I really appreciate your guys' support. If you have any questions that aren't covered by this video or the installation guide, you can always reach our support at contactus.th3dstudio.com. If you don't have an easy ABL for your printer, you can pick one up at easyabl.th3dstudio.com. Hope you guys learned something, and as always, happy printing.